In this video, I'm going to explain you how to use a heat map to trade crypto, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. First of all, the first thing that you need to know is that a heat map is basically a representation of the order book in, let's say, a visual manner. So, as you can see here, we have here the order book of the exchange. In this case, we are in Binance, but you can switch on Bitfinex, Bitstam, Kraken or Coinbase, for example. And basically, a heat map, what it does is that these orders that are in the order book, the limit orders, not the market orders, just the limit orders, are represented in this way. How this way is represented? Why we have these different colors here? Because here we have this, let's say, this setting here that we can adjust the minimum Bitcoin that we want to see in the heat map and the maximum amount. If you see here, if I'm switching the big BTC in the maximum, let's say 150 BTC, the colors will change. And, I, and if I am adjusting the minimum Bitcoin, uh, let's say a different area, we want we will see a different color in the heat map. But as I said before, the heat map is just a representation, a graphical rep representation of the order book. This is very important because, as you should know, every exchange has different order books. So the Bitcoin USDT heat map in Binance will be different than the Bitcoin USDT heat map on Bitfinex and it will be also different from the Bitcoin heat map on Coinbase because the order books, the limit orders that are sitting on these exchanges are different, varying from the exchange that we are trading in. Why the colors are different? Because, for example, now I'm using a theme on this uh, platform. This platform is called Trading Light. And, for example, this platform gives you the option of having different themes. So, for example, now I'm using the Thermovision theme, but also I can switch, for example, to the Ocean Blue or the Default Blue theme. As you can see, in this case, the orange or the yellowish colors are where the peak, the maximum BTC orders are stacked. Okay, and the minimum BTC are where the, um, let's say the purple or bluish colors are the orders that are minimum near to the minimum BTC. Okay, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to use the Thermovision theme. Okay, so in this case, the, the orders that are near to the maximum peak BTC that are 154 Bitcoin, okay, are going to be seen near to the white color and the orders that are near to the purple or let's say bluish colors are going to be the ones that are near to the, for example, 10 Bitcoin to the minimum. So now the main question of this video that I want to solve for you. How to use a heat map in trading? Heat maps are used for identifying support and resistance levels in a chart or supply and demand areas. Why they are useful? Because we are seeing the market orders, the limit orders that are already waiting, sitting there, waiting to be filled in the market. So right now, for example, we have a resistance area here at $65,000 on Binance USDT, on spot, not in perpetuals, okay? Because this, you need to also know that the orders will be different from Binance spot, rather will be different also from the Binance USDT perpetual from the Binance USDC Perpetual, okay? If, uh, if you switch the collateral, the orders, the limit orders will change, so the heat map will change, okay? But for the sake of this video, we're going to explain just that to identify a resistance level, we can see here that the heat map is telling us that we have a nine, uh, 184 resistance level or limit order waiting here to be filled. So here is someone or a, let's say a cluster of limit orders that they uh, that are waiting to be filled at 191 dollars uh, uh, sorry at 65000 dollars we have 191 bitcoin waiting to be filled here so we can assume that the price when it reaches this area will fill or trigger this limit order and it will sell the bitcoin okay what's the issue on heat maps the issue on heat maps is that we ha we have a very common practice that is called spoofing. What is spoofing? That many people put these orders here, as, as you can see here. Here, in, yesterday, we had a, 90, a 170 Bitcoin order waiting here, but when the price was approaching this area, the order was removed. 
Okay, you can see that here we had the order and then it switched to 191 to 97 and then disappeared. And then they changed the order to this area. So this is called spoofing because as I said before, a heat map is just a representation of the order book that we have here. Okay, you can see that when I'm reading these orders, we can see we can see the order book that is signaling the same level in the heat map. Okay? So if I remove the limit order, if I put the limit order and then I remove it, I can trick you to think that here is a limit order waiting or here is a limit order waiting. There is liquidity there waiting to be filled, but it's just spoofing. It's just spoofing. So that's why I don't consider that heat maps are so useful because spoofing is a common, very common practice on crypto uh, in every exchange. It's a lot of people that are doing this on whales or maybe a group of traders that to try to fool you or to try to let's say yeah to fool you they put limit orders so you think that the price when you arrive there it will find resistance or there is liquidity there and they then they remove these orders and you got fooled so the heat map basically is unuseful to identify the real liquidity in the market because spoofing is like a trick that is trying to fool you to trigger uh, to fool you to, to think that there is limit orders waiting to be filled there and never got filled, okay? So, um, as I said before, heat maps are just for identifying support and resistance areas in a, in a, in a chart. I don't care if, if it's Bitcoin, if it's uh, Polkadot, if it's Ethereum, if it's uh, Litecoin, I don't care. In every chart, heat maps are just for identifying support and resistance areas, supply and demand areas, or bids and acts, ask orders limit orders waiting to be filled there okay now we are talking about spot but you should also know that when we are in a perpetual chart now i can access the perpetual chart here in bitfinex i can because you see here bitfinex derivatives so for example we are going to change it and we are going to see bitcoin perpetual okay and now we can assume here let's adjust the orders here okay a little bit Okay, you can see that all these orders here in the perpetuals are not buying and selling orders, are just stop losses, okay? Usually they are stop loss orders waiting to be filled. So, for example, here we will we, we'll, we'll have, if the price reaches this area, a lot of long liquidations because obviously people is putting their, their long positions. Let me see if I can show you a long position here. Okay, I don't have the tool here, I think. But as I said before, here are a lot of, let's say, buying orders. And here are a lot of selling orders. Usually these in perpetuals means that a lot of stop losses are clustering here. So when the price reaches this area, will trigger a lot of liquidations. And in the opposite side, if the price dumps and reaches this area, it will trigger a lot of long liquidations. Okay, so here we'll, we will have the long, the short liquidation. And in here in this area, we will have the long liquidations, okay? And as you can see here, the, the heat map in a perpetual um, chart seems like a Bollinger Band, okay? Because it is like enveloping, is like embracing the volatility of the price. As I said before, a heat map is just useful to identify supply and resistance areas in a given market, in a given exchange by... Uh, tracking the limit orders that are already sitting on this exchange based on the order book okay the the first and main issue is that we have the common practice that is called spoofing that is banned from stocks and trading in other brokers but in crypto is not banned because it's not regulated so we have spoofing and it's very common so this is meant to fool traders and basically this means that the heat maps 60 to 80 percent of the time are mostly unuseful and unreliable that is why i don't use them you can use support and resistance i have other videos where i explain you how to identify support and resistance areas in a chart you can use also volume profile like this one this is a volume profile and it's more accurate than because as you can see we have here a high volume node here uh, also another hvn here another hvn here and we can assume that this will act as support resistance levels this is one technique but i have explained in my youtube channel 
a lot of different techniques to identify support and resistance areas or also supply and demand or big bid and ask in the in the chart so basically if you want to use heat map it's up to you mm, i see heat maps used mostly for engagement purpose i also use it to to catch because it's eye catching this is let's say it claims a lot of attention this is more eye catching than a normal chart in trading view so a lot of people tend to focus more their attention on social media like on X or on YouTube videos in this kind of heat maps but for trading for me for my experience is basically basically and useful and unreliable for taking trades based just on the heat maps if you combine heat maps with support and resistance in the trading view chart with volumes with with volume profiles with open interest then you can make a reliable trading system engaging also with heat maps but heat maps alone as i said is very unreliable because we have the spoofing so that's it for today and we see you on the next video